Julio, we're here in Vieques, Puerto Rico, a uh, wonderful uh, island, uh, Physics of Information uh, uh, Conference uh, for X FQXI. Um, everybody is talking about information, mathematicians, physicists, cosmologists. Uh, you're a neuroscientist, uh, having developed this remarkable theory of consciousness, of integrated information. Uh, from the perspective of your theory of consciousness, what can you then infer about the nature of information? It's a very different perspective indeed. I call it the intrinsic perspective as opposed to the extrinsic perspective. So at this meeting, we have heard all kinds of definitions. There are the classic and very powerful one, like Shannon information is the one that you transmit across the channel, mm -hmm. trying to recover a signal, how you store it, how you process it. There is Kolmogorov information, which is how can you compress a pattern and so on. They're all very important, very useful, and very powerful. But the information we're talking about here is intrinsic information. It's information from the perspective of a system itself, not from the perspective of an observer who wants to use the system to transmit things and store things. It is, what is it like to be a particular system? That's the question that uh, we've tried to ask for quite a while. So, what is it like to be a system? What is information from its own point of view? And the short answer about that is, it can only be the difference that make a difference to the system itself. So that's the intrinsic part. And the difference that makes a difference is what is captured exactly by the integrated information theory. Different that make a difference are things that constrain the past and the future of the system, and they do it above and beyond the part of the system. Otherwise, there would be no system at all. Is the nature of information, even though it's internal and intrinsic, of the same character, or is it just using an English word that sort of sounds right, uh, but is, is fuzzy? No, it's, it's radically different. So, for instance, I can say that we form a system, you and I, okay? And we are certainly talking to each other, and in some sense somebody could use us to transmit information, mm. as on the phone and so on and uh, store information. I tell you something you keep in mind, then we'll recover it later when I ask you again. So we can be treated by a physicist or by a computer scientist as an information processing system or storage system of some sort. But that tells us nothing of the fact that there is one there and one mm -hmm. here and only those two. Mm -hmm. So the information from the inside exists only somewhere in your brain there and somewhere in my brain here and not really anywhere else in between. So the information from inside is something radically different from the information from the outside. Radically different, I accept. Can it be expressed in numbers? Are there mathematical equations that can be used to describe it? That is the whole point about integrated information theory. If you wish, it could have been developed just by thinking about what is information in the sense of difference that make a difference to a system as such, without any reference to consciousness. Mm. And happens to be the case that it was developed with consciousness in mind, given that consciousness the way it is, how can we capture it? It is indeed a set of numbers. You can indeed describe it as a mathematical structure. But it happens to be also what we are. But being a mathematical structure um, and being able to describe in numbers, numbers per se seems like such a different category than the perceptions of internal phenomenology, what it feels like our subjective experience. It just seems like, it just seemed theoretically impossible that numbers could describe the experience that I have. Well, you see, Galileo said famously in the essay uh, that in order to do science, we would need to use the language of mathematics because reality is built, he said, of triangles and circles mm -hmm. and figures like that. He was referring to the outside world because he had the foresight of saying, let's forget the observer at the moment, let's yeah. look at the outside world and describe it. And then it speaks the language of mathematics. That's yes. what his great insight yes. was. Yes. I think in a way the idea here is that even the inside now, it's time to forget about Galileo and go inside ourselves and ask about the observer itself, ourselves, our consciousness. Well, that too, I think, speaks the language of mathematics. In fact, I think it's mathematics itself. It is a mathematical structure, it is a shape, and the shape is nothing more than geometry. So that's what uh, uh, I think uh, the bottom of both the description of the physical world and the description of consciousness is, if you wish, mathematical structures in both cases.